before members statements the member from Nipissing thank you and good afternoon speaker uh, it's my pleasure to once again rise and celebrate the latest success of a tremendous business in our riding uh, based in Mattawa the company is Gincor they recently announced the purchase of cross-country trailers in Blenheim Gincor says it plans to maintain jobs invest in the site and to actually increase the workforce as they bring cross-country into their fold. Gincor began with a single facility some 40 years ago in the town of Mattawa. They are best known for work vehicles like dump vehicles, snow plows, and other service equipment like cranes, pup trailers, and the Gincor name is ever more visible as you drive the highways across the province. Just listen to the amazing success Gincor has had in the past five years. They were ranked as one of Canada's fastest growing companies three years in a row uh, with Profit 500. This year, they entered the top 200. Their staff numbers have grown from 40 people to almost 500 with the inclusion of their newest location. And in June, they acquired DEL equipment, which added seven new locations, giving Gincor coast-to-coast -coast presence from BC to New Brunswick. On behalf of the residents of Nipissing, we offer our congratulations to Gincor Truck and Trailer Works, as they're now known, and wish them continued success and good fortune. Thank you. Further members' statement? The member from Kitchener-Waterloo. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. This past weekend, I attended the funeral of Gregory James McLean. Son of Debbie and Jim McCrory, grandson to Joyce McLean, best friend to Katie, and a good friend to a group of young men known as the Boys. Gregory James McLean died by suicide. To bear witness to the pain that follows suicide is a humbling experience. To learn of the darkness that tormented Greg was heartbreaking. For his loving family and friends, mental illness has become a harsh reality. Speaker, there is no doubt that having Greg as a son changed the life of my friend, and I watched in amazement as she transformed her grief into compassion for those who are left to live without Greg. They will need support and courage. She told Greg's friends at the funeral, put your phones down, look at each other, ask if they are doing okay, ask for help if you need it. We need to care more for each other. Speaker, Greg's life will not be de defined by his death. He had so much love in his life with his girlfriend, Megan, and the boys and his beloved family, but sometimes love is not enough. Professional mental health supports are needed, and I don't know how you move forward after suicide, after losing a child, but I do know that my friend will turn her grief into something positive, fighting for stronger mental health resources in our communities, particularly in the armed forces, in the Army, just as she did to honour her dad, Jim, who succumbed to prostate cancer. I believe that it will be a legacy of advocacy and compassion, which will honour the life of Gregory James McLean. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements. Point of order. Point of order. The member from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I believe you will find that we have unanimous consent that members be permitted to wear the purple peace flower pins to recognize the first Nanjing Massacre Commemorative Day in Ontario. <clears throat> the member from Scarborough Allegiant Court is seeking unanimous consent to wear the pins. Do we agree? Agreed. Agreed. I'll call upon the member to make her statement. Uh, Mr. Speaker, point of order. Point uh, of order. Okay. Mr. Speaker, I'm seeking unanimous consent that we observe a moment of silence in remembrance and to honour the over 200,000 victims of the Nanjing Massacre. As I have done in the past, I will seek unanimous consent to have a moment of silence, but we will defer it until after the statements by all members. Do we agree? Agreed. Agreed. Member from Scarborough Agent Court on a statement. I just don't want to get my pen. Anyway, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today on somber and reflective note. 80 years ago today in Nanking, then the capital of China, marked the beginning of one of truly horrific episodes of human history, the Nanjing Massacre. For six weeks, the Japanese army slaughtered over 200,000 soldiers and civilians before resorting to arson, rape, and murder of over 30,000 prisoners of war. On October the 26th this year, the House unanimously passed Motion 66, designating December the 13th of each year as Nanjing Massacre Commemorative Day in Ontario. The reason we are here today, remember, 
to recognize and reflect on these events here today throughout the province, Mr. Speaker, is due to the hard work of many stakeholders and over 100,000 Ontarians who signed petitions to support the Nanjing Massacre Commemorative Day in Ontario. This is a seminal day for many Ontarians, some of whom are either survivors or families of victims of the Nanjing Massacre. This is also an important day for millions of Ontarians with Asian history, heritage. Throughout World War II in Asia, thousands of women were used as sexual slaves, known as a comfort woman. The horrific practice has left physical, psychological, and emotional scars across generations. The Nanjing Master Commemorative Day is about education, reaffirming Ontario's values, and more importantly, Mr. Speaker, standing with survivors and victims of families in somber memorial of these atrocities. And I'm proud, Mr. Speaker, to stand with my colleagues and Ontarians today in remembrance of the Nanjing Massacre. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Further members' statements. The member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Homecoming is always a time for people to come together, celebrate, and essentially just have a heck of a lot of fun. Usually, people associate homecomings with college or university football, but for the communities of Belmore and Clifford, homecoming is so much more. In late June and early August, each town respectfully hosted nearly 15,000 people at their event. Thinking that Belmore is maybe a hamlet of 100 people, this is pretty significant. And I will note, on June 25th, Belmore saw its amazing community spirit very early that morning as people rallied together to contend with a historic flood when the mighty Maitland jumped its banks. And this amazing effort set the tone for the rest of the weekend. And I have to say that at the Clifford homecoming, the whole weekend was wrapped up by epic fireworks that no one will forget. But overall, people remember the weekend of homecoming as full of camping, parades, dinners, meet and greets, music, children's games, choirs, and so much. So much in the spirit of being proud of where you call home. And in the spirit of giving, I, I really think it's important to recognize that these small rural communities do so much. Clifford raised a profit of over $100,000, and all of it was donated to 31 different community organizations. And Belmore, the hamlet of approximately 100, raised over $96,000, and they paid that forward to the Belmore Chamber of Commerce for use to sustain priority projects for the community. I want to take time to acknowledge the group of remarkable citizens, organizers, volunteers, and sponsors for their incredible commitment to their communities and most importantly, demonstrating why people are so proud to call Belmore and Clifford home. Thank, Thank you. you. Further member statements, the member from London Fanshawe. Speaker, it is always an honour to rise in the Legislature as the MPP for London Fanshawe on behalf of my constituents. Today, I want to discuss the issues that have been raised by several members of family council groups that I have met with. Long-term care homes have family councils. To belong to a family council, a person must be a family member to a resident or a person of importance to a resident living in a long-term care home. The concern that I have heard from family council members is that when their loved ones pass away, they no longer are allowed to remain as a family council member with that long-term care facility. One issue that has been raised by the family council members is the experience and knowledge that they have acquired is valuable, and they cannot pass on that knowledge to the next set of council members. Members like Naomi and Deanna highlighted the fact that council members are afraid to speak out about gaps in care that they find or advocate for their loved ones or other residents. They feel that they are not taken seriously and they are afraid of police being called and served with no trespassing order or threatened with lawsuits. The main message that I hear from family council members is that they want to have a voice and want to participate in their loved ones' care in a meaningful way. It doesn't have to be this way, Speaker. Frontline staff, health care providers, administration and family members, everyone wants the same outcome. If we all work together for the same common purpose, our loved ones can live with love, respect and the dignity that they deserve. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Trinity Spadina. Well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, good afternoon. I rise in the House today to speak about something near to my heart, the Nanjing Massacre Commemoration Day and Motion 66, which was introduced by my good friend and colleague, member from Agent Court. Speaker, in 2015, I made a statement in this House calling for better recognition of the Nanjing Massacre. 
And I want to thank the member from Scarborough Aging Court for spearheading the effort and put um, at real action behind us and, and make the House recognize that uh, day through Motion 66. History is more than a recognition of the past events. It provides context and understanding. When we acknowledge truth, especially hard truth, it creates opportunities for growth. On Saturday, I attend a memorial to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the Nanjing Massacre. Today, I stand in the legislature to recognize how far Chinese people have come from those days in 1937. We have overcome, my family has overcome, and I have overcome. Today's commemoration day has been widely discussed on Chinese social media. History is not a passive actor in our lives. It plays an active part in our daily lives. Motion 66 passage, creating December 13th of each year as Nanjing Massacre Commemorative Day, opens up the past to discussion and analysis. Together, we can learn about history's harsh reality and make strides to understand the horrible event. Thank you, Speaker, and I want to thank all members of this legislature for helping to pass Motion 66. Let's work together to ensure these horrible events never happen again. Thank, thank you. you. Further, <clears throat> further member statement, the member from Dufferin Caledon. To rise on behalf of the residents of Dufferin Caledon and the province of Ontario to congratulate Sam Young on his induction to the Professional Golfers Association of Canada's Golf Hall of Fame. Since 1986, Sam has been the owner and operator of the Shelburne Golf and Country Club. It is a fantastic recognition for someone who has made an indelible mark on golfing across Ontario and Canada. Along with operating a golf course in a beautiful event space for weddings and special events, Sam is considered to be one of the premier golf instructors in Canada. This latest honour follows many others Sam has been awarded. In 2011, Sam Young was elected into the Ontario Golf Hall of Fame, which recognized him as, quote, one of Canada's most revered teachers. And in 2012, I was honoured to award Sam the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal for his teaching and mentorships of young golfers. Sam doesn't only teach his students golf skills, but he teaches him to love the game. To quote golf great Jack Nicholas, golf is a game of respect and sports sportsmanship, just like Sam Young. Sam's induction to the Canadian Golf Hall of Fame adds to Sam's growing legacy and underscores how beloved Sam is to his peers. We are proud that Sam Young has chosen Dufferin County to build his business. Congratulations. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kingston in the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House to discuss a private member's motion that I have tabled on Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder Awareness Day, which I will be debating tomorrow afternoon in the House. This motion, if passed, would recognize September 9th of each year as Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Dis Disorder Awareness Day in the province of Ontario. Although recognized internationally, we currently do not formally mark this day in our province. Mr. Speaker, more aware, awareness of FASD is a critical piece of the prevention efforts, and I have heard from the FASD community that in terms of general public knowledge, FASD flo flies below the radar. Many people have an idea that a woman shouldn't drink while pregnant, but do not have in-depth knowledge of the risks associated with alcohol consumption during pregnancy. By recognizing this Awareness Day, it creates more opportunities to educate the public on these risks. An Awareness Day also works to reduce stigma. FASD is a disorder that can be highly stigmatized because there can be a tendency to mother blame. An Awareness Day opens the door to informative dialogue and the sharing of stories that will empower women and proper, with proper information to make healthy choices. Mr. Speaker, this day would be as much for individuals with FASD and their families as it is to educate about FASD. It would pay tribute to those with lived experiences and those who work tirelessly to care for them and advocate on their behalf. Mr. Speaker, I look forward to speaking on this more tomorrow. Advocacy on behalf of those living with FASD is certainly something that I'm passionate about, and I'm hopeful that we can soon formally mark this day every single year. Merci. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Stormont, Dundas, South Hungary. Thank you, Speaker. 
Residents of Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry can be proud of its agriculture and agri-food industry. They are the stewards, stewards of a rich heritage, and today's farmers are in our region are at the cutting edge of in innovation. Following in their footprints, Ron Brennan, a hop farmer from Williamstown, is a recipient of this year's Premier's Award for the Agri-Food Innovation Excellence. Ron has grown hops for eight years and is very aware of the need to innovate and improve his, profit, his processes if he wants to stay ahead of the globalized industry. Ron took the challenge head-on and improved his data ga gathering and research by developing an app to store and analyze field data, which he dubbed the Hop Logger. <laughs> Digital technology in the future is the future of farming and helps reduce paperwork, speed up and improve crop monitoring, allowing nutrient applications to be adjusted to maximize yields. It also allows farmers to spend more time doing what they do best, to tend to their business and to share expertise with others. Ron's future ventures include taking the hop blogger to market so that other growers can benefit from it. So I'd like to extend my congratulations on behalf of the residents of Ontario to Ron and winning a well-deserved award and best wishes in his future business ventures. With Ron in the business, hop farming is a great future in Ontario. Congratulations. And as busy, as busy as he is, Ron and his wife Stephanie are also involved heavily in the community. And I want to thank them for all their hard work in helping keeping our local schools open. Well done. I want to thank all members for their statements.